Hey everyone. So as someone that's definitely against collective or preemptive punishments towards people just because of something that has happened in the past, I've called it, just like when I was talking with Rance Derrick in my video yesterday, I call it the what if doctrine. I mean, we've all probably, I think each and every one of us have had to suffer or undergo a tremendous amount of pain because of something that might have happened to someone, whether it's in our immediate family, extended family, maybe a neighbor, maybe a co-worker, a respected member of the community. Either way, you've probably heard that someone were, have, have been involved in, in an accident of some sort. And I mean, if you want to delve down deep into it, we can always, if you, if you have a vindictive mentality or a vengeful mentality, you can always try to find some reason, some underlying aspect of the incident where, hey, if we had just done this, it would have possibly prevented the particular tragedy or incident or accident. And if we just make sure no one else can do that going forward, well, maybe we can prevent these kind of tragedies, incidents, and accidents from happening. That, that, that's never worked, folks. That's never f worked. Like I say, the only time, this is the problem that I see with this. And like, you're come, this has come from a person that I lost my dad when I was in my teens. I was 17 years old and my dad was beat to death when he was out west BC trying to seek a job because there was nothing on the East Coast. So he had to travel all the way on this other side of this country to seek out employment. And he was beat to death. And I lost my dad at a time w which was really rough. But there... There was never anything in my head where I was going to fill that void, fill that loss, that feeling of loss, by causing harm to others. I mean, I definitely want the people that were actively involved or participants in the death of my dad, I definitely want those people punished. For sure. I love my dad. And I definitely want the people that caused his demise to have to suffer and be penalized for doing so. I mean, that's, that's just a reality. And my son, I mean, my youngest son, he lost his girlfriend in a motor vehicle accident. That, yeah, but once again, even under that scenario, I wasn't looking, hey, let's see if we can sue. Hey, let's see if we can find some way that we can create some kind of blanket legislation to deal with people that do something that, like I say, made it, might have had something to do with, the, with what, how the events unfold that caused the demise of my son's girlfriend. Folks, listen, we, you know, th this constant using the state or government as as your means of vengeance that's all you're all you're doing is like i say i get it you're upset i get you're hurt i feel your pain trust me i do i felt it myself but yes this constant using the state and government as a means to an end constantly and just what you just keep throwing these blanket statements of, well if we just create enough laws we'll prevent bad things from happening well no you will realize at some point in time, but actually when that finally does happen, it'll probably be too late. But all you proponents of big government are creating more and more laws, rules, or regulations to prevent bad things from happening. All you're going to do is socially and economically enslave the rest of your people and your population to the point where nobody's happy, nobody feels safe, nobody feels secure, everyone's filled with hate, vengeance, and division, and in fear of each other. That's not a proper strategy. And I'm just going to be dealing with a couple articles of this. And like I say, I, I, I'm compassionate towards these people. I feel terrible for what has happened to these people. But once again, I, I feel even in this case, in this scenario, I still feel I have to step up and try to be a voice of reason. First one is out of CBC News Canada with the headline, How is that not torture? Beating of Nova Scotia teen reignites debate over torture definition in criminal code. Five people face assault-related charges for a vicious January attack against Nova Scotia girl. This is being reported by Mark Gollum, January 1st, 2019. The vicious beating she endured went on for hours, she says, and by the end of the brutal attack, she was a bloody mess with chunks of hair ripped out of her scalp and her face almost unrecognized from punches and kicks. How is that not torture, says the 17-year-old Yarmouth, Nova Scotia teenager, in an exclusive interview with CBC's Kayla Hunsell. I mean, come on. I mean, the fact that CBC would use a 17-year-old girl and her emotional pleas to propagate this kind of message, that, that's, that's already immoral. You know, deal with that in a private situation or a setting and explain to that girl basically what's laid out and contained within the subsequent aspects of this article where, yes, we're not going to create... A whole new field where we can just charge people with torture, right? 
assault is already there because there's such thing as like assault with a, pe a weapon or depending on the severity of that assault, there's already levels of punishment that will deal with this situation. Just make sure that the judge is not lenient towards these people. That's, that's what matters as long as the judge hands down a sentence appropriate to the criminal acts, then you don't need to reinvent the laws and come up or, or create a whole new law where now people can just be charged with torture. I get the emotional plea, but stop trying to unwind and undo historical precedent in regards to what it means to, you know, all those things that matter most to us as far as what justice entails, right? Presumption of innocence, fair and equitable treatment be before the laws, punishments befitting and aligned with the severity of the crime. All those things, all that stuff's already been established long ago under English common law. Anyways, I'll move on to this article. Like I said, I feel bad for these people. I know you're lost. I know you're suffering. But use this. You know, sometimes this, this, this matters too. But sometimes you got to use this as well. Or maybe both of them. It doesn't even have to be one or the other. But make sure they're both functioning at the same time. Moving on to the next one. Another CBC article, this time out of Saskatoon. Headline, Our loss can't mean nothing. Mother of Humboldt Broncos therapist pleads for mandatory semi-driving training. Federal Provincial Transport Ministers meet Monday in Montreal to consider changes. This being reported by Jason Warwick, January 19th, 2019. Carol and Lyle Braun say nothing can bring back their daughter, Dana, who was killed in the Humboldt Broncos bus crash. But there is something politicians can do for others. Federal and provincial transport ministers are meeting Monday in Montreal. The Bronze family is pleading with them to make training mandatory for semi-truck drivers. Our loss can't mean nothing. I mean, it'd be very heartbreaking. As much pain as we're going through now to think that pain doesn't count for anything. Carol Bronze said in an interview with CBC News from her home in Lake Lenore, Saskatchewan. So listen, once again, I feel terrible. I, my heart is heavy for the pain of these people that, and what they go through. And I've had to go through it myself, like I say. So I know it firsthand. I understand it. But once again, even if you create, even if the government comes up with legislation that you're, you're putting forth or, or lobbying for, right, that makes mandatory driver training a re prerequisite to get your truck driver's license, that's still not going to prevent accidents from happening. I mean, I know myself even, there was a thing when I was a young man and I got my license, just my regular G license in Ontario when I was a young man, just to drive a car. Uh, you needed to save insurance. You could take um, these safety training courses that would save you 40% on your insurance. But I found out, and I'm telling you, I'm not going to name any names, but when I was a kid, I found out that actually you could just, rather than pay for that course and be properly trained, you could also just pay one of these driver trainers a few hundred bucks, slip them a few hundred bucks under the table and you could get that same certificate. That kind of illegality, that kind of immorality, that's still going to happen even if you create legislation. Bad people are going to be bad people. Accidents are still going to happen. You can't prevent bad things from happening no matter how many times or how many laws you put on the book. You can't legislate morality and you definitely can't legislate or prevent accidents from happening. There are lots of ways that we can deal with these situations. Technology and education are two key factors that would do a whole lot more than another rule, regulation, or act of legislation. But once again, it's always about the emotional appeal, right? And, and the central planners, the authoritarians, they rely on the emotional appeal of people like this because they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll create another law, right? For sure they will. It might seem good for this particular reason, but think about the intended or unintended consequences that may cause more harm than good as a, re as a result of this kind of legislation or even the expenditure or costs involved with um, following through with mandatory training and all like all this. Once again, you're still never going to get around the criminals or the elements of society where they don't really care for dealing with these rules or regulations. They're, they're always going to find a way or a workaround to not have to align with them. All you're doing is causing more and more hardships and pain for the people that are competent, aren't criminal in nature, and are proactive in making sure that they do the right thing in regards to any occupation or career that they undertake. 
Like I said, folks, stop. And I can't help but point out here once again. Once again, I'm sorry, but two ladies that were referenced here, right? And I, I love you ladies. I really do. But stop using emotional appeal to lobby for big government. Like I said, you're never going to get to the point where you can truly legislate morality. And, and, even, if you, and even if you could somehow achieve any amount of success as far as Prevent bad things from happening? Well, the only way that that will truly come to fruition is if we're all contained and locked inside our own impenetrable bubbles. Locked away from each other, isolated and alone. Now, I prefer liberty. I prefer freedom over isolation and some false pretense of security or safety. I do today. I always have and I always will. It's Canadian Libertarian and I love liberty.